everyone, and welcome back to Deeper Roots. Today, we're taking some time to talk about Christmas. Not only what it means for us Christians now, but what it should mean to us Christians. Christmas has taken a lot of forms throughout the, just these past few years due to a lot of things changing throughout the world. But we want to reflect on the holiday and talk about how it resonates throughout our lives. The topics on the Deep Roots podcast are entirely listener submitted. And if you want to submit your own questions for the podcast, you can submit it on our form at the webpage www.ibbvn.org slash deeperroots. On the website, you can find the form as well as the rest of our episodes and the streaming platforms that we're on. If you like this podcast, please give it a like and share it with your friends, your family, your church, whoever, that way they can enjoy it as well and they can submit their own questions for themselves. This is a good opportunity to tell you that Deep Roots will be taking a break for the rest of the year and will be back in January. We want to thank you for your continued support and for all the questions that you've asked throughout 2021. We look forward to hearing more questions from you in the future through 2022, and we're praying to God to lead us to the future of Deeper Roots. Thank you for joining us today. Now let's get to the conversation. Hey everyone, welcome back to Deeper Roots. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about an upcoming holiday, which is Christmas. Christmas time is an amazing time of the year, and uh, we always love to have it come around, especially here at church. And uh, this episode, we want to take some time to uh, talk about Christmas, talk about uh, how it is in our society and culture, uh, and what's changed about Christmas lately. Pastor, do you want to get started? Sure. Thank you, um, Derek. Merry Christmas to all of you. This uh, episode, it's going to be called um, On the Topic of Christmas. And we just want to be able to just take some time here on Deeper Roots just to meditate a little bit more about what the biblical um, uh, Christmas really is about. And I think um, when we come to Christmas, like you said, it's probably the best uh, holiday for a lot of people. Uh, we equate it with family with food with uh, gatherings uh we equate it with also you know just a a jolly time you know it's christmas cheer and the music comes on the lights start blinking on the, in 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 the street and i'm not going to deny it's one of, one of my favorite parts as well um but as christians should christmas be something deeper than just uh, a, a merry feeling for a, a month or so and then um uh, back to to a new year you know going back to the same things where we were at or have we truly gotten the gist of what christmas is about so i just want to start out with that question uh, we have esther here esther what do you think or are how is christmas perceived by most people today in society uh it seems to me is more of a um definitely seen as a holiday time as you said for family and gathering it's also, we were talking about this earlier, you know, it's this supposedly picture perfect maybe holiday when family, food, and everyone gets together and everything's great. Uh, but the reality is it feels like it's the craziest time to be driving because people are driving crazy. Yeah. People are stressful. People are frustrated. You know, things that maybe weren't taken care of, meaning like family issues brew even more. Um, thinking about gatherings. And I think it can be stressful for a lot of people. Um, and I, I hope believers are not and, and that we are really thinking and meditating on what it really means and doing our part every day to not be part of of that craziness mm -hmm. how about you derek what's christmas uh, like you think in most people's eyes today in society i think that one of the biggest things in christmas is just like the gift giving um especially i think especially this year because uh companies are trying their hardest to get people to buy mm -hmm. to buy 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 because exactly. like uh right now actually this year because it's like technically like post covid era but it's not post covid we're still have in it um but people are more like people have been buying more like getaways people have been buying more experiences rather than buying products buying things right mm -hmm. and uh, like there's there's pros and cons to uh, to all of these but for the most part like advertisements have been through the wazoo have been through the roof uh they've been uh 
the companies have just been like putting advertisement after advertisement and extending their uh, their Black Friday sales. Now it's black. It's pretty much like black season sales. <laughs> yeah, black, pretty much black uh, month like black whatever. month sales. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they're just trying to get you to buy more and more. And that's especially prominent this year. And for the previous few years, it's also been just increasing, increasing. It goes even before Thanksgiving, like early Black Friday. Like I see it as early as Halloween. It's crazy. So it's just, I feel like a lot of people are pretty much submerged in this, um, this buy season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think um, one thing that comes to mind, like we say, this kind of uh, picturesque kind of Christmas that most people have in mind, which doesn't really meet reality when we actually live it. Is um, you know sort of like the Hallmark movies. I don't know if you've ever watched the Hallmark movies, but you know every Hallmark movie has that idea of this just this perfect world and this magic that happens, some miracle that happens on Christmas, and and it's and it's all good feeling, you know. But when when you f- uh, look at that, I almost see I almost see those movies as a yearning for what we wish Christmas really was like Mm -hmm. Uh, because there's two aspects I think we've really seen grow in our time Uh, maybe once in upon a time maybe even before my time Christmas was maybe more about family more about giving and thinking of others Uh, When you got a gift, it was really meant something because maybe we weren't living in such an affluency, uh, uh, affluent society where today, let's be honest, I'm not rich. And most of uh, us here in our church are not rich. But when it comes to people asking me, what do you want for Christmas? I'm like, I have everything. I don't need anything, really. May may want things, but I don't really need them, you know, and and it's it comes to a point where, you know, today, just the wow factor to for a kid to be wowed and stuff. We're talking about things that most people will have to get into debt for, you know, just to have this wow factor for the kids and stuff. And we've sort of lost the meaning of Christmas in, in the commercialism of Christmas. Of gift giving and and just giving getting more having more kind of thing when we live in a society has so much already uh and then second i think it's also the dechristianization of christmas where it's all you know that's always been the the competition with uh santa claus and making it a very secular holiday where it's all about just this gift giving and and santa claus and the gifts but we want to take christ out of christmas you know and even the whole war that's uh, that we've had in the past right now it's sort of been calm waters on that front but where people don't want to say christmas tree they want to say holiday tree they don't want to say merry christmas they want to say happy holidays and they want to make it all politically correct uh so i think that's definitely one thing uh two things actually that's grown in in our time where we've seen the the um, just taking christ out of christmas part the the original meaning of christmas of what christmas is about the birth of christ and also the commercialization which has um when you really think about matthew chapter 6 when jesus said you know you cannot worship god and maimon which is money you know that's sort of like the the perfect match for christmas you know the devil has made sure that um the competition for christmas to take out the true meaning uh of christmas out of out of christmas is always has to do with money and commercialization and all that stuff uh and it's a sad commentary but it's a true reality right now so did you have a follow-up questions before we go back to um, what Christmas should be? That that's where we're going to head. Well, I'm more typing out just uh, my my thoughts on this whole idea of the war on Christmas. Do we want to start off with that? We could go there. Sure. Okay. Um, so I was actually having this conversation with my brother uh, like a few weeks ago, and he actually asked me like, "What do you think about the war on Christmas?" Mm-hmm. And uh, I was I actually was thinking about it. Like, obviously, like the easy answer for me to say like, "Oh, like it's like the." The Christians are in this war on, uh, war for Christmas to save Christmas from being coming a secular holiday. Uh, that's pretty much what the war on Christmas is: is to uh, like stop the secularism and stop the consumerism from like from getting to Christmas uh, and uh, removing Christ from Christmas. But I was thinking about it more, and uh, no, we already lost that. It's already been that battle is already lost, just in the same way how uh, like this um this quote-unquote culture war between uh like christianity and uh, the secular world has already been lost to uh, the uh to the side of secularism where like we're just we're trying to uh we want uh we want 
the faith to be uh, like the main to be main, the main focus on society and it isn't anymore and that is the case with christmas it isn't the focus anymore yeah. and like obviously like we can say like but like starbucks is trying to take off the take off the christmas stuff and put and just leave red cups or whatever and it just like, these are like such small things that we're just trying to grasp to when in reality like the red cups was never what christmas was about it was never about the christmas tree it was never about whether you called it christmas tree or if you called it the holiday tree it was uh, always about does it point back to christ and uh, does it only in the churches mm-hmm. yeah and that's the thing it, it, we can't maybe, maybe like you said we may have been losing the battle in, in society the war is not over and but it's not a war in the sense that we're supposed to take political action uh, we're supposed to be the ones out there protesting and make sure it's merry christmas and not happy holidays because that's not the focus of the church uh, it's more a, a we're talking about being standard bearers mm-hmm. which means that we have to not let that definition invade our view of Christmas and our belief of Christmas and for us to not let that war be won in our hearts because the society uh, battle might be being lost today but it's up to us as a church and as persons, individuals, to keep the true meaning of Christmas alive and what Christmas is really about and like you said, it's not about necessarily the Christmas tree or the red cups or stuff, but it does affect because it is the reason the society has worked so hard to take out Merry Christmas or to have Santa replace the the, the manger and and all and the focus on Jesus because that's what the devil wants. It works. If mm-hmm. not, why would why do it? Why would he work on replacing uh, those those uh, elements of of the original celebration of Christmas? But, like we said, we have to go in deeper as believers to really uh, think. Now, it's not so much about a Christmas tree or singing Christmas songs necessarily, although that's part of it. Uh, It's more about also what Christmas really was all about when God (laughs) chose to come to the Mm -hmm. the planet Earth. And, And those attitudes that he came to to want to share with us so that we can really live out into our lives. Um, so I'll, I have a couple points, but Esther, did you want to follow up? No, I think it's, that's, if you want to talk about battle, I think that's the one, that's the one that we're battling at church. It's reminding our members to not get up in the current of the culture of the society right now and, you know, stand firm and, and really focus on the true meaning of Christmas and passing it on to the next generation, which there's there's where we're quote unquote battling more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And okay, so the where, where I want to go with this um, uh, little uh, special mm-hmm. <laughs> isn't really sort of looking at what is really the attitudes or the 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 clues or the evidence that we've truly gotten what Christmas is about because Christmas is not about the gifts although if you want a gift you want to be nice to someone and give them something they need praise the Lord mm-hmm. you know but it's not about that necessarily it's not about the food it's it's more about getting why Christ came about why did Christ come and see right now in our church uh, I've been preaching just a couple just last Sunday and today I'm going to be preaching the second sermon on uh, Christmas through the eyes of Isaiah you know and sort of seeing how Isaiah viewed the coming of the Messiah you know when when Isaiah was looking towards the future he wasn't looking at this jolly time with the sprinkly lights and the tree he saw basically a savior coming to save a wretched people people that needed a savior people that were lost people that were in depression people that were in 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 horrible situations and that was the great news of of this promised messiah that god would come and be take human form live uh, our 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 uh, condition out as humans so he could understand us and eventually dying for us and, and coming and, and coming back to life to be our our savior and our um 
uh, the person that would have victory for us and, and give us that victory in new life through Christ. And I think one of those, when I think about attitudes or things that God wants to see in us, which I think is so devoid today of Christmas, um, from our celebrations, from our attitudes, our Christmas giving and all that stuff, it's three things. I think uh, first and foremost, I think God came uh, in the spirit of humility. You know, that that's one of the things that hum uh, the Christmas story is wrapped in, in today. Part of my sermon is going to be about that. You know, the Christmas story is wrapped in humility. You know, from his incarnation, the way he was, uh, he came to earth in a manger. They didn't have to be that way, but he chose it that way. How, um, lowly shepherds were the ones that to receive the message from the angels to a, a, a humble servant in mary mm -hmm. a nobody in joseph uh f nobody knew his name from well, even though he was from bethlehem and 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 on and, f and so forth we have this this story of humility and in so much uh of the christian attitudes today there's so much lack of humility today in people um and, and it's all about look at me uh, look at what i have or i want to look uh, this way or give me more gifts so i can be better than so and so and and we're talking about christians we're not talking about the world we're talking about people in church that mm -hmm. sometimes uh, mm -hmm. display these these uh, attitudes and the Bible says that we have to have the mind of Christ, Philippians chapter 2. We have to have this humble attitude with which he came to earth. Um, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who didn't think it robbery to be like uh, with equal with God, but became a servant. And that's what we have to really re uh, remember this Christmas as we celebrate, that you know the spirit of Christmas is a spirit of humility, first, first and foremost. Uh, you can stop me if I can go, go on with my other two points, but if there is follow ups, let me know. <laughs> um, I just want, like, I wanted to take the point of humility and just, uh, like, bring out, like, just expand it a little bit. Um, when we think about the way that Jesus came and he came in a manger and everything, and uh, we, we take a look at his life, and we, uh, the, the awesome thing is that we have a whole book based on like that is about his life the whole the entirety of the bible like it's uh the entirety of the bible is supposed to point back to jesus christ so if you think about it the entire bible has a section where he it is a literal like how we would define a biography mm -hmm. and then uh, we have uh, how he came to be which was how jesus was born which was like pretty much like isaiah and also the first parts of uh of the gospels and the um prophecy but then also how those things came to be which is uh this israel and everything ever since the beginning of creation was pointing to uh, was pointing forward to jesus christ mm -hmm. and then everything after the gospels everything is pointing back to jesus, jesus Christ's Christ. example mm -hmm. and we have an entire uh amalgamate an entire library of 66 books mm -hmm. that all point back to jesus christ and yet jesus was still born on a manger mm -hmm. he was still uh, he still came here not for himself but for us mm -hmm. the king of kings born in a manger uh if you uh, if you have seen anybody especially nowadays who have had an a, a biography or an autobiography because they think themselves so important that they're going to write about themselves mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. Like sure, some like yes, I will say that some people's stories should be told, and it's a t as a uh, testament to perspective, as a testament to learning about each other and each other's cultures. That is clear, but uh, some people like get biographies, and it's only about them and their lives, mm -hmm. or like what they've done in their lives. And sometimes it could be about the effect that they've made. Uh, that's what uh, a lot of U.S. history is about. It's about the effect that a lot of uh, a lot of founding fathers have made. Or a lot of other presidents have made, uh, but no one gets it as in depth as uh, it all starts at the very beginning, mm -hmm. like Jesus Christ. Yeah, and 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 he is the he is the focal point of history. He is the focal point of life. <laughs> he is the focal point of creation, uh, and yet he chose to be uh, a, a picture of humility a gift wrapped in humility in in in, in christmas and um that's definitely one thing i think we need to remember that christmas should be about and the second thing is also humility um besides humility is compassion i think also when we think of the story of um, of christmas uh seeing it through the eyes of isaiah he's seeing a people that's wretched 
and and honestly he's 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 an israelite he's he's the prophet for his people but he's looking at it like wow god's gonna actually send a messiah even though mm -hmm. To be honest, we don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. We don't deserve mm -hmm. it, you know, because when we're to looking at the picture of, of Israel in the Old Testament, it's just a picture of humanity. It's a picture of you. It's a picture of me. It's a picture of, of the church today where we don't deserve it, mm -hmm. but yet Christ had compassion on us. And in the verse right here in Matthew 9, 36, it says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them mm -hmm. because they were... Uh, harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd you know and and you, you look at these people which most m many of them would be the ones that would later on be saying crucify him crucify him and he knows that jesus knew that yet he had compassion he he was moved to compassion uh for the people and that's uh, i think a lot of people today like we were talking about earlier you know when it comes to family gatherings they don't want to get together the, there's feuds there's there's uh there's the uh, nobody wants to try to see other people's points because there's no compassion there's mm -hmm. no there's no uh compassion over uh what people might be going through and sometimes we're just so wrapped into our own things into our own little world that we forget that there's people hurting and we have to have compassion as, as uh, people as well that and then we have the the audacity to call ourselves christians mm -hmm. when we are so self-centered and self self-absorbed today and we lack compassion uh, that's what second uh, timothy's chapter three talks about it says you know that there's going to be uh, people dangerous times coming but then when it describes the times and it says lovers of themselves lovers of pleasures more than god mm -hmm. unloving uh, unfaithful but then the key verses in verse 5 where it says, having an appearance of godliness, mm -hmm. but denying the power thereof. That means they're going to say they're Christians, mm -hmm. they're going to look like Christians, but in the essence of what a Christian is, devoid of it. Mm -hmm. You know, denying the power thereof. So it's just forget, which is uh, first, uh, like I said, humility, compassion. Mm -hmm. And then the third one I would add would be um, also the spirit of forgiveness because that goes in with compassion. Uh, so Christ had compassion. He came. He took our, our, our form. He came to become a, a human being so he could pay for humanity's sins. That was all through uh, love and compassion. But also we forget the action of what comes with compassion is also forgiveness. That God chose to forgive you, to forgive our, 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 our sins. And it's not just, uh, okay, I'm... Uh, I say, okay, I'll, I, I forgive you. It's actually, it's something he never brings up again, which mm -hmm. we struggle with so much, right? Mm -hmm. We struggle with the whole action of forgiveness, first of all. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we just don't like to forget either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we keep, keep bringing it up, keep bringing it up. And, and we don't, and that doesn't really mean we, we forgive. And I think one of the things today that also Christians need to sort of ask themselves, do I really have the spirit of Christmas, the spirit of Christ? What Christ came to do to change us in, in us is, am I willing to forgive those who have wronged me? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen stuff on, on the internet. I've seen posts from people. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes it's from people who have been harmed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and we will say they have been harmed. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're right in being angry what will happen with them. And maybe sometimes it's uh, situations also that call for justice, mm -hmm. and justice needs to be d carried out as well. That's why God set the laws and set the government to execute judgment over sin that's done. But what I, I see many times in posts is the anger and the bitterness, but I don't see forgiveness. And these are Christians posting, you know, and I'm like, where's the forgiveness? Where is the forgiveness? Forgiveness is not for the for the perpetrator of mm -hmm. the sin, of the crime. It is a gift you give yourself, a gift that God gave us through Christ, through Christ Jesus. It's a restoring of peace. It's a restoring of peace. And and, and you all you see is this bitterness inside. And, and, and no matter how much justice is done, no matter how much things go on, you have to learn to forgive. Because the spirit of Christmas is a spirit of, of forgiveness, about letting go. And, and, and giving it to God because forgiveness when you think about it when we don't forgive it's really uh, an action that we're trying to take uh, uh, what do you call it when you take people kidnap um. Uh, hostages you mm -hmm. take hostages you know and that's uh, you say well I'm not gonna be nice to this person I'm not gonna smile to her mm -hmm. or to him I'm not going to talk to them until mm -hmm. you feel that they have paid for the wrong that they did to you 
And so you take hostages. You take hostages. Mm-hmm. You with, 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 withhold those things until you feel that they have repaid you. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that will never come. And then it just makes more pain for yourself. Like there's exactly. a, like the saying, like the mod- actually pretty modern saying goes like, they just live in your head rent free. Yeah. Uh, they, they just occupy space and they occupy your time. And it, it's not worth it. It's, it's not, not worth, worth it for it. you to, to, to maintain this bitterness or to maintain this, uh, this lack of forgiveness just because uh, you want them to pay. Like they don't, they don't, they're not, if they, if they haven't done it yet, they probably won't. If they haven't asked for your forgiveness, they probably yeah. won't. Of course, like a God might be working in their hearts, but you can't let you can't let that expectation of them to be better to weigh you down. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the person could be like someone as close as a father, or a mother. Uh, it could be someone who harmed you, maybe uh, emotionally or, or 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 sexually or whatever. Uh, but the thing is that you know, no matter that person could die. And you'll still be bitter because the grave will not solve that if you're not, if you don't learn to forgive. That's why even in secular psychology, that is a practice where they pay, make people who are struggling with bitterness. Sometimes it's bitterness against mom or dad who did something and they're already in their graves and years have gone by, but they're still living with it mm-hmm. where the person has to or is told to write a letter and go read it in, 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 in the grave site, mm-hmm. letting go or, or sit uh, in front of an empty chair and talk to that empty chair and let go and forgive. Mm-hmm. Because if not, it only eats you up and only harms you. And mm-hmm. that's really what the spirit of Christmas should be about. It should be about that uh, uh, humility, first of all. There should be about compassion, and it should be about forgiveness. And ultimately, that all will just bring up this, like the the idea that Christmas is supposed to be the holiday about peace. Mm-hmm. Uh, all those those points about the compassion, all of that just it it leads back to uh, the idea of feeling complete again, complete. of being being uh, being at peace. Um, Esther, do you have anything else you want? No, I'm just, I don't have anything to add add with what you guys are talking about. I just want to encourage people to, if you haven't yet found a way to prepare yourself for Christmas, you should. Either through a devotional, listening to hymns, um, going to special services, whatever it may be, because it helps us leave the society and get a break in the stillness and the peace for a bit and be reminded of what Christmas truly is about. Um, I know I, I started a couple of years ago starting, I uh, started doing a, an Advent devotional, which is just preparing everyday devotional, preparing me for Christmas. And I really, really have enjoyed that. But there's so many other things you can do. Like I said, hymns, you know, I, I put on Christmas <laughs> hymns at work when I just, it does make a difference. It does remind you of the season. And I think it also reminds us those three points that Pastor's talking about. There it moves the focus of maybe whatever you're it may be maybe you were thinking about gifts or whatever and it just reminds you of who it's about and pushes that away for that moment and just brings you back to what's important mm-hmm. about Amen. yeah i want to finish with uh, the verse luke two fourteen. remember the angels you know they they announced to the shepherds uh sometimes we over we read the uh the verse and we sort of overstep it real fast but remember, this is a message. This is a message that God sent the angels to give, you know, and it was a very short message, <laughs> but it's a very deep message if you actually meditate on it, which it says, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. That's what Christmas purpose was about, to bring mm-hmm. peace in your heart, in your family, peace in, on, earth. In, in, on earth, everywhere. And, uh, and it says, and goodwill towards men. In other words, God came to forgive. He gave to give us goodwill, not to give us judgment, mm-hmm. not to give us what Can we deserved, restore. but to give, uh, mm-hmm. to restore, to res- restoration, to have forgiveness, to have compassion. And I hope this Christmas we can practice those a little bit more. It's hard in the world yeah. we live in today. <laughs> it really is. Uh, the first thing that wants to jump out is, uh, you know, sometimes the, the, the sinful nature in us. But it, it, we have to continue meditating on these things to really like we said to be standard bearers for what christmas is really supposed to be about yeah 
I said, do you have any closing thoughts? Okay. Well, uh, we're going to close this uh, this pod, uh, close this episode of the podcast. And this is actually going to be the last podcast of uh, 2021. Um, thank you for joining us throughout this, uh, this year of uh, doing the podcast. We believe we started in March or Something February, like, like very early on, on in this year. And uh, we are approaching our like 50. We're going to be approaching our 52nd episode sometime soon. Hopefully we'll do something special for that because that would just be like a, a year's <laughs> worth of podcasts um but we're going to be taking a uh, a short break uh, a little hiatus because we have stuff that's going on here at church and uh, very busy schedules especially during this holiday season during the christmas season um but we hope that you'll join us back again when we come back in january when we'll be recording and uh, publishing uh, more podcasts uh throughout uh throughout the next year Thank you for joining us again, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I appreciate you listening. We hope to see you next year. Thank you. We'll hear you next year. Bye. Thank you for listening to Deeper Roots. If you want to submit a question, follow up on something we talked about on the podcast, or you want to find us online, you can go to our webpage, which is ibbvn.org slash deeperroots. Deeper Roots is a ministry of Iglesia Biblica Baptista Villanueva, which is a local church in Castro Valley, California. And you can learn more about us and our church by going to our website, ibbvn.org.